Good morning, my lovely people. This is Kitten from The Kitten and the Goat. I help beginners to grow their knitting experience and cut the jargon and do patterns. And I'm doing a special one for you today because King Cole have given us a complimentary Christmas blanket pattern. This is fan and feather. Fern and feather. No, I think it's fan and feather. It did never ceases to fascinate me, this one. I've made a start on it. You knit in a straight line, of course. You know, you knit in a straight line. Okay. So you tell me how it does that when you've knitted in a straight line. It makes waves. I've done a few. I've got a bit more to do. I'm going to talk you through the pattern. I've tweaked it a little bit. I do to make it slightly easier for you to understand but basically it's the same pattern I've also done the math so that you can have different widths of blanket if you want um, a pram blanket or you want to make a shawl stole type thing so there's only one row of pattern to worry about let's get on and show you it down a little alley in the heart of Kendall Town is a tiny independent yard shop. Welcome to the wonderful world of the kitten and the goat. Okay, here we are. This is some of the blanket knitted up. It's eternally fascinating to me that you knit in a straight line and you get waves. And the further you go down the blanket, the stronger these waves get. It doesn't show for the first few rows. And then all of a sudden you think, wow, all done like that. It's not a difficult pattern. It's a four row repeat. There's only one pattern row where you really, really got to concentrate. The other rows, you can get your breath back and work. Personally, I always stop before I knit the pattern row, and then I've got the hard thing to start with. And then it's better, you see? Downhill all the way. Right, I'm going to show you this pattern row, and then I'm going to talk you through a few little tips and tricks that I've figured out along the way. So, on the pattern row, you knit two, and these are a repeated sequence pattern so what I do is I put a thing there then you're going to knit two stitches together three times one two three that's a pattern then I put another little marker the next section is yarn forward, knit one six times. So you bring the yarn forward, you knit one forward, two forward, three forward, four forward, five forward six and if you wanted to go and check that you've done that right you have now got there's your marker one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve stitches so you can check it each time you go along i'm not with some little markers so that is another pattern sequence then the way the pattern's written, it gets you to knit three times and then go back to the beginning to knit three times of your two stitches together. I find that a little difficult to get my head round. So I've knitted together my three stitches. I've yarned forward six times and I've tweaked the pattern slightly. We are now going to knit two stitches together six times. Okay. One, two, three, 
four, five, six. If you want to go back and check that you've got six stitches, you can look at the last marker, count your stitches. That's the end of a pattern section. You've done that. I'm getting used to these long circular needles. It took me a little while to get used to them, but I must, I have to say, it's so much more comfortable to work on for these big projects than single pointed needles. So we've knitted two stitches together. Now we're going to repeat the other pattern. We're going to go yarn forward, one, oops a daisy, run out of memory. But there we go, we're still in exactly the same place. Yarn forward, one, forward, two, forward, three, forward, four, forward, five, forward, six. That is the end of another pattern repeat. So we put a marker in. If you want, you can go back and count them. So, yarn forward six times, knit two stitches together six times. So, one, two, three, four, five, six and then again you can count them that's the marker that's where you put the marker you've got six stitches oh there's a little doggy trying to say hello to us look bless him dear little soul oh yeah i know eddie bear yeah i know you want cuddles just hang on mate yeah i know it gets a bit complicated doesn't it so we've done the two together and then we're going to do yarn forward one forward, two forward, three forward, four forward, five forward, six. That's the end of the other pattern row. That literally is it. You've just got to keep track of each little pattern block make sure you've got enough stitches in each section as you go along you can always double check when you get to the end of the row that you've done enough stitches i have a few tips that i've come to grips with as i've been working this uh, this is a fan fan and feather fern and feather no, i think it's fan and feather Work in a light colour. I mean, I, I absolutely adore this speckly purple. But it's absolute rubbish for seeing where the holes are and where you're going to put your needles. Stick to a pain, pale colour. This will work on any yarn. If you want to do it in double knitting, use 4mm needles. Chunky, 6mm. This is super chunky. I'm on 9mm. It doesn't work in a fluffy yarn. Do not use a fluffy yarn. And to be honest, a variegated pattern doesn't show the detail as much. The original pattern had a colour change every four rows, which does really show the waves off. But to be honest, I'm not going to sew all those tails in. There's a horrendous amount of tails to sew in. It really is crazy. Um, use stitch markers to divide your pattern sections. Once you've done your pattern row, you've then got three plain rows that you can relax, you can recoup, you can get your stitches back balanced. Um, when you're working your pattern, chant like I was doing, yarn forward, knit one, yarn forward, two, yarn forward, whoops, three. Oops, daisies and then you know where you're going take breaks when you need to always take breaks 
the mistakes that most people are going to make are with the yarn forward. Um, I found that I was constantly bringing a yarn forward before I would start knitting them together. That grew a stitch every row. That's not a good idea. This is why check them, count them, recheck them. This is a free pattern that King Cole have given us. Um, it's free on their website to download. It's free in the shop to download. I'm going to rewrite my version and I've also done the maths to get you some narrower if you just want a small cot blanket, um, something like that. If you want to make it small and make a shorter and make a stole narrower and make a big long stole out of it, that kind of thing. I will put it on my website with my notes as part of the pattern so you can see it. I, I love this pattern. I've never done anything like this before. So I'm going to cast off here. It's going to be in the shop as a sample for anybody to see. If this is your first heavy textured pattern, have a go. Seriously. Shout me if you get stuck. Um, if you need anything explained further, just message me. We'll work it out. If you can knit and you can do a purl, then you can knit two together. So... You can do this pattern. Easy. Let me know how you get on. If you have a go at it, I'd love to see your patterns. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.